Welcome to Appaloosa, More Than Just a Color Breed, a podcast dedicated to showing the world the versatility and adaptability of the Appaloosa horse, as well as the people devoted to preserving and enhancing this outstanding breed. Welcome. I hope you're doing well today. Thank you for joining me for episode number two of Appaloosa, More Than Just a Color Breed. I am your host, Tony Bottoms. For this episode, I sit down and have a conversation with Johanna Downs, owner of APHC Stallion Mad Desire. Mad Desire is a 2009 16-hand Bay APHC Stallion. His sire was TD and 3, and his dam was Kella Figment. Mad Desire was a 2010 non-pro world champion yearling stallion, the 2011 non-pro world champion two-year-old stallion, the 2011 Open Reserve World Champion 2-Year-Old Stallion, the 2011 Non-Pro World Champion 2-Year-Old, the 2012 Open Reserve National Champion 3-Year-Old, the 2012 Reserve World Champion 3-Year-Old, and the 2012 Open 3-Year-Old Year-End National High Point winner. Hey, Joanna, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for joining me. To start off with, we'll start with who's Joanna Downs? Tell us a little bit about you and just kind of your background, that kind of stuff. Well, I um, come from, I was a teacher for uh, 30 years and uh, I had horses when I was young. And that was probably when I was about eight. 18, I said, oh, you know, I started, started college and thought, mm, I'm probably not going to be into horses anymore. Went to college, became a teacher, as I said, taught for 30 years. Uh, retired um, at about my age for 55. I said, okay, I think I've taught a lot. I loved the job, but I wanted to do other things. And I made a decision at that point that I thought I might want to get into horses again. And that's how that started. So... <laughs> You never kind of get away from it, completely get away from no, that. No, huh? that's what I think I've learned because I certainly do love it. Well, that kind of answers my next question. I was going to ask how long have you been involved in horses, but I guess we can move on to the next one was how long have you been involved with Appaloosas? Well, Appaloosas came along when I decided I thought I might want to get back into horses. So I had mentioned to my niece, Brooke, when she was back at the World Show with her sister, or excuse me, my sister, Julie, uh, and Julie's horse uh, won and halter. And I was watching it online and I said, wow, that just looks so exciting because my sister was into Appaloosas, which she had been into for years. So I said to Brooke, hmm, I may want a, a horse. How about you start looking for one for me? And I gave her my criteria of what I would like. Mostly, I've always loved Arabs. So I said I would really love a horse that maybe could win in a show pen, but who has a really pretty face and head. That's my, that's what I would like. So she called me back and she said, well, we may have a horse for you, Aunt Johanna. Um, I said, great, a mare or a gelding? And she said, it's a stallion. <laughs> I said, okay, well, we see a picture. So she sent me a picture and so started my time with Bugsy. So I saw him and I said, I fell in love with him and I said, it's okay. He's a stallion. We're going to go with this and we're going to try something new. So anyway, she brought him home. And as soon as he got off the trailer, I was just so excited. So that's, that's how I got into Appaloosas. It was actually through my niece, Brooke and my sister, Julie. And I came involved in 2010 with Appaloosas. That's a pretty big step. I think I might want a horse to actually own in a stallion. Exactly. <laughs> that's jumping in with both feet on that one. I think so. Yes. That's, so it's been the adventure, let me tell you. Quite the adventure for my husband and my family and I. It's been interesting. <laughs> it's been amazing. Yep. And uh, I come from a Jim Canna, girl racing, let go fast background from when I was a kid to now I own Alt Stallion. So I've learned a lot and I've you know, I have him and I have my mare. I showed my mare. My sister showed my stallion along with trainers. Um, so I've learned how to show at halter. And I love I love my halter horses now. So pretty much big, big change for me. But I just, 
I just love my horses. I always find it interesting to find out where everybody comes from and then where they end. You know, my wife, for example, my wife's hunt seat. You know, she comes from the hunter jumper world. And then here we are in Appaloosa. Now, when she was a kid, you know, younger, she owned an Appaloosa. It just by fluke, it wasn't something she went out looking for. But now here we are again. Mm-hmm. She fell in love with that horse also back, you know, that was years ago. But it's just interesting to find out where people come from, like you said, coming from barrel racing and that kind of stuff into the halter style. You know, that's, that's <laughs> kind of like going around the world on that one. Just about. I feel like I kind of have with the whole the whole thing, you know, um, and my horse way back when when I was in the uh, Jim Canna ring doing all that, she was a quarter horse. So, yeah. So I've um, really come full circle, although it was very interesting because my sister and I discussed this one day. We were in a club together when we were young and it was usually between my horse, who was a quarter horse, and my good friend's horse. And guess what he owned? He owned an Appaloosa. And it was always a race for both of us to see who was going to get high point at the end of the year. So he would end up taking some of them, and then I would end up taking some of the rest of them for barrel racing, figure eight, quadrangles. Let's see what else do we have, keyhole. So we usually split that half and half, but he actually owned an Appaloosa. So I always thought that was interesting, too. Yeah, that is interesting. Now, now was that out there in California or was that someplace yes. else? Okay. In California. Yeah. See, here in Oklahoma, you know, this is quarter horse country. And Appaloosa is kind of known for being slow. That's kind of the stigma that they have out here. Mm-hmm. I find it interesting that the person you were fighting for points for or with <laughs> was the person on the Appaloosa. Yeah. And then I'm right down the road here, here where I live uh, from one of the major Appaloosa racetracks in Oklahoma, which is kind of, I just recently found that out. That's pretty cool to find that out. Oh, that's neat. Did you go watch those races? I have not yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously with the show, I'm planning on going and visiting because <laughs> never really paid that much attention to it. You know, I grew up more South Oklahoma down towards Oklahoma City, which we got Remington Park down there. And when I was growing up out in Saddlesaw, we had stu- uh, Saddlesaw Downs. I'm trying to remember. the. It's not Sa- Yeah, it is Saddlesaw Downs. Blue Ribbon Downs is what it was called back then. So, you know, I grew up, you know, quarter horses, thoroughbreds and stuff like that around that kind of stuff. But Palooza's, like I said, it was new to me to find out that this one right down here in Claremore, and now Remington Park is doing Appaloosa only races. Also, it's one of the major parks. Mm-hmm. Well, you know there is a lot of quarter horse and thoroughbred blood in many of the Appaloosas today, including in Mad Desire. His dad was a full quarter horse. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I think especially for the for these racing horses, might have a lot of that in their background. Yeah. And, and that's kind of cool about the breed, too, is you can kind of cross into quarter horses, thoroughbreds, trying to get what you want out of the horse. Exactly, yeah. If you want more of a, a race horse or you want more of a hunter under saddle, then you can go to the thoroughbreds. But if you want more of a halter, then you can go quarter horse. And that's what makes it kind of interesting to me about the breed is because you can kind of do that selective breeding to kind of get what you want. You're not restricted to certain things mm-hmm. and that does make it nice yeah uh, you can even get a, the solids out of out of there too the solid colors and still an appaloosa right now you said you picked up bugsy in 2010 is that correct yes and did you guys when did you start breeding him was it pretty much right away or did you wait and get oh, some no he was only a yearling when i bought oh okay him. he was okay. a baby he was a yearling so uh, he came home. We were like, yo, we could really, this could be a very nice stallion in the Appaloosas. My sister and I had discussed that, but we were way far away from that because we wanted to take him into the show pen to see how he would do. And so what we did is uh, we started showing him locally, got his points uh, so that we could take him to the world. And when we brought him home, he had already won the non-pro world championship as a yearling with his breeder and owner at the time, Marco Bertazzoni, and that's who I bought him from. And he's in Texas, in Pilot Point. And so he'd already had a a really uh, good start. And so we said, well, our biggest goal is to try to get him back to the world and, you know, have him 
try this again and see how he will do. And let's uh, get him into the open classes too, because he hadn't been in the open classes with trainers. So that was our goal. And then we showed him locally. He won a lot. He won most every time he went in. He also won many grand champions and so forth and so on in the local shows in order to qualify for World. And when we brought him back to World, my sister Julie showed him in the non-pro class and he went unanimous. Every judge picked him first place. It was amazing to watch. So he, uh, she and he won uh, non-pro that year. And then he went into the open class and he proceeded to win reserve champion with the open class. And we were amazed. So we decided, you know, we need to keep showing him. He's still young. He's only was a two-year-old at that point. So we showed him at two and three a lot everywhere. As a three-year-old, he won high point of the year. He had the most points of any Appaloosa stallion. So he has a medallion for that, bronze medallion. And he proceeded to go into both the nationals and the world that year. And again, place reserve champion and open. But the best thing about him is he was always consistent no matter who else was in the show pen he never came out less than reserved me at the world and at national so he always was first or second always right there he's very consistent and was always judged very consistently so that's when we decided we wanted to go ahead and put him up for being a stallion just to because we knew that people would hopefully appreciate those things and our first clients actually came from Australia, where we have quite a few babies. So we're very excited about that also. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. I was going to ask you if that was something that you had planned to start breeding or shipping to Australia before the U.S., or if that was something that just kind of happened. What happened with that is my niece, Brooke, and my uh, manager over there, Nicole Wilson, they had discussed Bugsy for the couple years that I we were showing him, and Nicole had told Brooke that she loved him the first time she saw him in the show pen at World um, with Marco and how much the people in Australia really liked him, that he brought some things to their to over there to their horses that they had been looking for and hadn't seen in another horse up to that point. So... She said, do you think your aunt would be interested in, um, you know, shipping frozen semen to Australia? So really, it started with Brooke and Nicole and their conversation. And then Nicole and I discussed it. And that's kind of how that started. And then at that point, we were also with a trainer, Steve Del Porto, and he helped us to set the whole thing up so that we could get Bugsy's frozen semen shipped over to Australia. It's quite an ordeal. It takes a lot to do it, but that's what we did. And that's how he got started, as a matter of fact, with the Australian market because they really, really liked him. And that's interesting that he can ship to Australia. There's, you know, a lot of quarter horse stallions that go to Australia or go to Germany or Europe, but to ship that far, that's kind of rare. I mean, that you don't see that every day. Yeah, to ship that far and also have the mares get in full pretty much with the first time that they are trying to get in full was pretty amazing even to them over there they were quite pleased so i have several wonderful clients in australia um, many who have bred more than once you know a couple times with their horses and now i've got these babies going into the show pen as yearlings and then the next year so we're really only on our, let's see, my first foal was born in 2000 and let me get my dates right. I don't have them in front of me. So I, I believe it was t- the end of 2014. I would really have to look and let you know that for sure. But he was on a little Australian horse and he still, he went in and he did great. The horses over there that they have been showing that Bugsy is the sire for, the owners are very happy with. Now, is Australia the only place you guys have been shipping to outside the U.S. or have you been getting inquires from Europe and stuff like that also? We get inquires, but it's very expensive to ship. And so then that cost kind of rolls into what they have to pay to get it help get it over there. So you have to have 
quite a few people interested in order to do it. And I had uh, 10 people interested my first year with Mad Desire. So then that makes it worth it to go ahead and to pay that cost up front to ship. Europe has been interested, Italy in particular. There's a few people there, breeders there. We do have some Canadians um, this year that are going to breed. So we should have some Bugsy Babies on the ground next year that are actually out of Canada. So That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Hopefully we can help out with that Europe connection with the show because I'm sure we'll get some downloads from Europe. Now, it's one thing to have a stallion that has a big long list of accomplishments, but then to turn around and ask the question of, does he pass the traits they're helping him win onto his offspring? And I know from, because we have a Bugsy Colt, and you look at all the pictures from Australia, they all look like him. So obviously he's passing those traits on to his offspring, and they're winning in Australia. You want to talk about that a little bit? Well, uh, it seems to be that his traits are being passed on. They have very similar traits to him. They, a lot of them have the same confirmation, same heads, faces, curiosity in their eyes. They all have the similarity to him in many ways. They also have many of the traits of the mares. We had some great mares over there that um, were were bred, uh, picked and bred to Bugsy. One of them in particular, uh, she was the supreme Appaloosa over there, uh, that which is the highest award for the Appaloosa breed in Australia. And her filly actually has very many traits as Bugsy, but her the mother also had the background similar to Bugsy in the quarter horse side. So it's amazing when you see this filly, she actually looks exactly like her mother in many ways, although she also looks just like her dad. So it's interesting. We also have one over there that Kilo Connection is a grand sire to Mad Desire. And we have a little stud colt over there as a yearling going to go in the nationals. We're very excited about this year. And he, his coloring looks almost exactly like Kilo Connection. It's it's amazing. So we are seeing some really amazing and wonderful traits being yeah, I noticed looking at all the pictures that they all seem to have the same head and face for yes. the most part. I mean, there's obviously some differences in each each horse, but that's what I thought was really cool about it. And you know, looking at our colt, I'm like, wow, you can in the head and face you can really see it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and that goes back to what I did ask my niece about in the very beginning. I said, if you can find me a horse who has a pretty face and head. I'm all for looking at that one. So <laughs> I am very pleased so much so that the babies have all of them have that every baby that's come out is just as, just as cute as can be. Of course, I'm sure I'm prejudiced, but um, <laughs> Aren't we all? they're all beautiful. They're all just and their little faces. I all can I can see Bugsy in it just the way they look and just how they kind of hold their heads or how they hold themselves. It's it's very exciting to see. So I'm just very, very pleased with that as an owner who hoped to have that in her own horse and now to see that being passed on. Very exciting. Right. Now you've been doing some pretty good marketing here in the U.S. for Bugsy leading up to his Colts here in the U.S. hitting the ground. You want to talk about that a little bit? I have done several. Uh, I do. I do advertise in the Appaloosa Journal. I've had two amazing photographers taking, well, I should actually say three amazing photographers taking pictures for my medallion. I've got, uh, I had Gail Bay taking pictures in the beginning. I now have my niece, Brooke Flagtwit, uh, doing all of his ads and marketing. So we do put very nice ads into the Appaloosa Journal. I also have had him on the stallion calendar for th three years. He was a part of that. And we got a website for him. We have also a Facebook page. So we like to have him out there. We like to show his pictures. His pictures are true to what he looks like. He's he's changed colors since he's been a baby and he's uh, varnished out. So it's interesting to see the way his coloration has been. But he, as far as the way he looks, he hasn't really changed much at all, even though we really don't work him out anymore or fit on him. It's just the way his confirmation is. So that's exciting. And so we have done those type of things for the marketing. 
I also, every year for Nationals and World, usually do advertising at the show. So I like to have him out there. And I also like to support the club. I think it's all goes together. If you're supportive of things, then you get that support back also. Right. Now, how do you believe that Bugsy helps to advance the breed? What was it about him that you caught your eye the most that you thought, this is something that we need to pass on in pass on to future generations of the Appaloosa community? Well, I believe that Bugsy brings his own set of personality. First of all, he's got a definite personality to him that I think I have seen evident in every foal he's had. A curiosity for the world, a a horse that really uh, likes to be, he likes to be observant. He likes humans to be around him as well as horses. A social horse in many ways that way with both human and others. I think he also brings to the breed a very nice confirmation that seems to be passed to his foals and that that brings a strength to them. And it also brings a beauty. He's got a beauty about him when he is running or when he's walking or anything. He has a presence. And I think that he brings that presence to his foals. I think they all have their own presence that they've that it's been passed on but then they've they have it themselves you can see it in them each of them has their own unique presence so i think what he brings is a uniqueness to the breed that he's passed on to his babies okay uh we'll shift gears here a little bit what do you think that we need to do as horse owners as a club to get more people involved with aphc particular younger people and just with horses in general, not necessarily Appaloosas. Obviously, we would like them to come over to Appaloosas. Mm. I think, because I know for myself, I'm still fairly new. I'm not, I've only been in this since 2010. I've always felt welcomed into the Appaloosa world. And I think what my horse helps to do is people can take a horse that's out of my stallion, including I have now a yearling, and he is a stallion. And I myself do not feel intimidated to be around this horse or show this horse or work this horse. He is He's very kind-hearted in many ways. And I think that People like to know they have a horse that they can actually work with. And I feel like that's a really good plus your stallion can sire horses and that people can buy that horse and they feel as if they too can show that horse and have fun with that horse and possibly even take that horse all the way to the bigger shows and feel confidence in that. Um, And then if they want to switch over and ride that horse, we have several of the clients in Australia who are riding their horses in events and doing well. And then I also have a two-year-old that's in training right now um, to be a rider. So I think that that versatility is helping also to bring people in. So to feel comfortable to take a horse and have it yourself, no matter what your age is. You could be young, take this horse, and you can have it for as many years as you'd like to in the show ring or just for fun, whatever works for for you and what you, you like with horses. Yeah, I think that's a, a good point, especially with stallions. You know, a lot of people are intimidated by stallions, and rightly so. Some stallions are not pleasant to be around. And I think that's a big thing to have a horse that has a good brain on it to where you can, you can go out there and you can do whatever you want. If you want to show halter, you can show halter. If you want to go out there and ride, you can ride. I think, yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. That's that's a big plus. That's nice to have a horse that has a brain. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. And so I think for people that are looking to purchase a horse or to find an Appaloosa like that, I think that helps also to bring people in. So they feel like, okay, I can buy a nice horse, but yet this horse is also going to kind of do whatever I would like this horse to do. It's a versatile versatility, I think. Right. Well, now you, you've you mentioned that you kind of have this team around you. you got Brooke and Cindy. Is there anybody else that you'd like to mention that might be part of that team that we might have left out? 
Well, uh, there's the Brooke Flag Twit, and then which is my niece, and then there is Cindy Polly, where I keep my horses, and where um, also have all, all of them except for my horse Bon Bon, who is now with trainer Keely Grenier, and then also, of course, I want to mention my wonderful manager in Australia, Nicole Wilson, because without her. None of this probably would have happened. I shouldn't say none, but it would have been a long time coming. She loves my horse. She's actually visited him out here as some of my other Australian clients have. And I very much appreciate that. That's basically our team. And my horse also was shown and fitted for two years, two and a half years with Steve Del Porto. So he definitely helped to put my horse out there and get him shown. And also Terry Sartain, who showed my horse in all the open classes. So I appreciate all of the people. It takes a village to do this kind of business. You don't just do it by yourself. I appreciate the gals at the office in the Appaloosa APHC. They're wonderful. And all the people in the advertising department. Uh, I feel like it's a family in many ways. Well, now you mention that because Noel made that same statement that it's a family. The, mm-hmm. the Appaloosa Horse Club is kind of has this family vibe to it, and we've definitely got that feeling, particularly with you, you and Cindy and Brooke. You know, when we finally decided that Mad Desire was a stallion that we wanted for our mayor you guys just kind of embrace this as a family. And right. when the cult was having some problems, Cindy personally made a phone call and said, Hey, how's everything going? And that- she did that just so you know, on her own. I mean, right. I mean, she and I had discussed it, but then she went ahead and called Heather on her own volition. She decided to do that. So I, that's what I like to say about the people that are involved in the club in particular, in this little team that we have and how much we love all of you guys as the clients. Um, it's a, it's a, it is, it's like a family that we're working together and trying to make it better, not only for just ourselves, but for everybody. So yeah, I would agree with that. Definitely. And, and we care, we care. It's not like, Oh, here's all our babies. And isn't that Wonderful. I pretty much could tell you many things about every baby with it written down, but now I have like 20 babies. So (laughs) (laughs) see, but I know things about each one of them and I keep track and I keep in touch with all the clients. I talk to them a few times every month, just see how they're doing and how the babies are doing. So it's, um, it's, I think it's that it's that extension of the, the care that you feel. Well, I appreciate it. That's for sure. Cause like I said, we're newbies. Is there anything that I may have missed that you'd like to talk about? You'd like to discuss? No, I wasn't sure what you're going to ask me in the interview. So I was a little bit nervous. I was thought, Oh no, what am I going to say? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you for talking to me. And I hope you guys have a great breeding season. Hopefully we can do this again sometime. And Thank you so much. All right. Well, thanks again, ma'am. I appreciate it. We'll let you get on with what you're doing. Thank you so much. All right. You have a great day. You too. Bye. All right. Bye. That brings us to the end of the show. Thank you for listening. I hope that you enjoyed the show and that we'll see you here next time. Please share the show with your friends. Go to iTunes and give us a rating. I particularly like the five-star ones. And leave us a comment. If you'd like to contact me, would like to leave a suggestion for a show topic, or have somebody that you'd like me to interview, then you can look us up on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash Appaloosa Media. You can find us on Twitter at Appaloosa Media, or you can email me at Appaloosa Media One, that's the number one, at gmail.com. Thank you for listening and have an happy day. <laughs> <laughs>